What's going on, peeps? It's Wrath here, hanging out today, playing some Monster Legends. I want to thank you guys so much for coming out with me today. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and show your support, if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright guys, today is going to be kind of a talky episode, and I've got a lot I guess I need to talk about, so we're just going to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? We're not going to, we're not going to mess around with it. So today's episode is going to be on a, like, a free-to-play player's guide to being at least moderately decent in PvP. All right. Now, there's a lot of things that I wish I would have known when I started, like someone would have made a video on it for me, but I couldn't find one. So I figured, you know what? Let's tell the peeps what I would do and what I'm going to do now because I've learned what I need to be doing. And hopefully, oops, hopefully it helps them get through what they need to do. So we're going to go ahead and hatch some eggs here. Just say it. We're not going to level these guys up at all. We just need to get the egg slots open. So we're going to do that. All right. So first up is going to be kind of like some tips on what you should do early-ish game earlier on to really help you later on because if you don't do them you're gonna be in some trouble um and i found a little bit of that trouble myself but i've seen people that got it way worse than i do so i kind of want to let you guys know if you're watching the channel to kind of help you guys out for later and then we'll talk about what you need to be doing in the kind of second stage of your free-to-play journey that's going to help you stay relevant in pvp you know, especially because that's where I would say most of your players right now, if you're free to play or struggling, is in PvP. Um, especially like myself, I was at 4,000 plus, the new update dropped, and I am now at like 3,500 something, having a bad day. You know what I'm saying? So this is going to help you stay where you're at least moderately relevant in PvP. It's still going to take a lot of time, but it's going to at least cut some of that time down for you. All right? So let's do some dungeons here, just on autopilot or something. Um, Jim's dungeon, that sounds like a good one. Right? It sounds like a great one. We'll just do some of this. <clears throat> do I have a decent team? I do have a decent team. We'll let this run. All right. So, tips. The first tip I will give everyone out there is absolutely do not. Do not do the adventure map. Okay? That's one of the biggest tips I can give you as a free-to-play player is early on, do your absolute best to avoid ever even touching the adventure map. Um, at least, like, never go past 200. You don't need to. There's no reason to. I did a little bit because I do, like, YouTube on it and stuff. Um, but absolutely avoid it as much as you possibly can because being a high level in this game is, like, the nemesis of being free to play, okay? It's going to make your game much harder. You'll have much more difficulty doing, like, gold fever, growth spurt events, and your 72-hour challenges are going to be nearly impossible for you to complete because your gold production has not caught up to your, you know, your level. So, absolutely avoid the adventure map. That's tip number one. Tip number two is save your Elementium. Now, I see a lot of people do this mistake, is they're always crafting monsters using Elementium. Like, every time a Cell Week comes around, they're crafting a new monster with Elementium. Don't do that. Elementium is one of the most rarest resources in the game. It's even rarer than gems. You don't get near as much Elementium as you get gems. Um, and it's very, very useful. Okay, it really comes in handy like where I'm at now for ranking because I definitely need to be ranking monsters up. Elementium makes that very easy to do. Save your Elementium, use as little as humanly possible to craft because you don't really need to be crafting that many monsters, especially like I said at my level, I don't even need it. Like a new level 100 monster will do nothing good for me in PvP, so I might as well save those gems and rank up someone that will help me. You know what I'm saying? All right. Now, step three for, like, a more early on player, um, this is going to help you get to, like, stage two, I guess. I break it up in two stages. Stage one is getting up to having a nice base of legendaries, and then stage two is ranking the good legendaries to continue your journey, all right? So, step one is going to be get a good base of legendaries, all right? That's going to go all the way from commons all the way up when you're getting legendaries. What I would say your best bet is going to be is to get three monsters from every element, and every book. Maybe not the exclusive book because a lot of those monsters cost money money, um, but about three monsters from every element and every book will give you a great bed of legendaries to use in Team Wars, which is really all a level 100 monster has for me at this point is Team Wars. There's no really reason for me to have a 100 monster in PvP, even though I still do because I suck, but like I said, that's an important important step get those three legendaries do a little bit of research make sure you're getting good legendaries like don't buy a hay man and a white walker not a good idea but once you've done that once you've got your three legendaries from every element in every book it's time to move on to step two all right now step two stage two of your journey will take a very long time but it's still a very important thing to do and that's going to be 
picking two or three monsters that you're going to rank up. That's it. Because as a free-to-play player, it's going to take you a very long time to rank. So you need to make sure you're investing that time in two monsters. Or two or three-ish, okay? Now, a very important thing to note here when you're picking those monsters is you never, ever pick a support-based monster. Let's go ahead and back out of this. Do I have any stamina points in here? Of course not. That would just be too fortuitous. But what I didn't say in here is you absolutely do not want to pick a support monster. Like, do not pick a General Ingvar. Don't pick an Incognita to rank up. It's a waste of your gems because what I'm saying here is the, the most important thing a support monster really does for your team is they carry in team speed runes to your battle. That's pretty much their biggest job. Yes, they can heal, like, you know, Lich here. He can heal. He can remove negative effects. That's always great. Goldfield, I said. Um, that's always nice, and it's very good. But as you noticed, this guy is breedable. There's no reason to waste your gems or your war coins ranking up somebody that you can breed. Okay, so just breed yourself a gold field to 130, run three team speed runes on him. It's much, much cheaper, and it's fast. It allows you to do a breedable, a war coins, and a gem-based monster ranking. It's going to save you a ton of time. And like I said, the support monster is nowhere near as important as the denial and the damage dealer is to your PvP offense. Okay, so with that being said, obviously, you're going to be picking... Two monsters, maybe three. I'm going to go the three route. We'll take a little longer. But two monsters, one for deny and one for damage dealer. Now, a very important thing to note here is they got to be useful in three parts. Okay? The first thing they got to be good at is PvP offense. Obviously, my defense team is sucking dongs. PvP offense. All right? PvP, off look, PvP offense and defense are two very different things. They're two very different ball games. All right? So it needs to be good at offense and also in your defense, which mine is bad. See? Bad, bad, bad. I get wrecked. But that's the important thing. Two spots there, and the third spot a lot of people don't really pay attention to is going to be, actually, I think there's one going on right now, is the survival dungeon. Now, you would say, why the survival dungeon? Why is that even important? Um, what has that got to do with anything, right? Well, the survival dungeon is the hardest dungeon you're going to run across. Okay? It, it scales up the highest levels possible. So, like, my gym's dungeon will probably end with level 105 monsters I'm fighting. My survival dungeon will end with level one level uh, 135s, okay? So way, way harder in this area, okay? So make sure you're, at least your damage dealer is good for all three, okay? That's very important. So once you've done that, you need to, one of your two monsters, okay? If you're doing the two method, um, one monster will be ranked with gems. So like a, a Voltaic, Demise, those are gem-based monsters that will be ranked with gems. And one should be War Coins, um, General Thades, Nishant's Pet, if you're going Damage Dealer, you know, General Darmouth, something like that. All right? That is important because it's going to cut down your time on ranking your monsters by a lot. Okay? A lot, a lot, a lot. So that's very important to note. Now, if you're doing three monsters, obviously... One is going to overlap. You'll have either two gems or two Team War Coin monsters you're using. Um, I'll be doing it that way, but eh. So a popular little deal here, popular two combo you see very often from free-to-play players is going to be a General Thades. Bang. Um, she's ranked with Team War Coins. She is very prevalent in PvP, as you know. Um, she's almost everywhere. And she also has uses in the Survival Dungeon. Very good Survival Dungeon monster with her Elite Sea Troops. So you see a lot, a lot, a lot of these. And as the damage dealer, you see a lot, a lot, a lot. Oops, stop doing that. Voltaics. Because Voltaic, again, is good in all three spots. He's great in PvP offense, he's great in PvP defense, and he's also good in survival dungeons. So it's a very powerful and popular um, two combo for your focusing on ranks. I'm not going to do it that way, because like I said, there's so many General Thades out there, it's important for me to build my PvP attack team to counter her. And that's why I will be using a Demise. Because Demise, 1v1, um, if you're doing two different denials to face each other, Demise always beats General Thades. It's not even a contest because she has the higher base speed, and she can pass the extra turn to your damage dealer with double damage, and you can pretty much one-shot the General Thades on defense. Um, so always, in my opinion, like I've never lost a single battle, a 100 Thades to 100 Demise. It doesn't happen, okay? So that's why I'm going to go this route. I'm going to take Demise as my denial. And I know people say, well, she's support monster. Um, her and Metalisha are like the two oddballs. They can be run as support if you want them to, but they can also be run in denial capability, um, and that's how I'm running mine. So she'll be my PvP denial, and now, as you know, though, she sucks at PvP defense, and she's pretty much useless in the survival dungeon. So that's why I've got to do a secondary rank up, and that's going to be Nishant's pet. He will be my backup denial. 
Um, I don't think he's on offer right now. That would just be too convenient. But he, the reason I'm going with Nishant's pet over, say, a General Autumn, because he can be Denial, or General Thades, is he's so much cheaper. Yeah, he's not here. Um, unless his price changes because they changed possession, he might be a more valuable monster now, so he might increase in price. But because he is like 1,500 coins and uh, General Thades is 2,500 coins, it's obviously much cheaper and much faster to rank a Nishant's pet. Plus, I like Nishant's pet a little more anyway. That's just my personal preference. I'm not a huge fan of General Thades. Um, but like I said... That would be my secondary deny. Now, as you notice, neither of those denies are really worth anything in a survival dungeon, and that's because in survival dungeons, you can get away with your denial slot being unranked. Because it's going to have three speed runes on it, it should still outspeed all of the enemies and allow you to pop the important skill you need, i.e., in General Thady's case, that I'll be using in my survival dungeons, Elite Sea Troops, which will refill my stamina, give precision and damage boost, to my damage dealer, which is going to be Voltaic. Because Voltaic is so well-rounded, uh, I know he's overused, but he's overused for a good reason. Um, for a free-to-play player, he is probably, hands down, the best damage dealer you can rank up because he is so useful in PvP offense and PvP defense and also the survival dungeon. When you pair him with General Thady's survival dungeon, he can burn through his entire stamina bar, kill the enemy team, and the next turn, you pop Elite Sea Troops, and he's ready to do it all again. Okay, so very, very solid in all three spots, and that's why I'm ranking mine up. Um, so I just kind of wanted to give you a little insight into what I was choosing, um, because at this point in the game, like I said, my gems have no use on buying new monsters, okay? I have no need to pick up another test today. I have no need to buy a Flamarian or uh, whatever that dude is, the little frog, Granui, and Vodanoi, or Vodianoi. I don't need any of those. Buying a new monster for me is a waste of my gems at this point, because I don't need them. They're not going to do me any good at all in PvP. It's much better for me to save my gems up to rank up someone that I actually will be using in PvP. So as a free-to-play player, if you're really struggling in PvP, this should be the guide that helps you funnel your way into action. It's still going to take time. Don't get me wrong. It takes a long time to rank up, but it will get you to the point where you can still be competitive in PvP, and you may have a shot at getting back into Legends League and kind of hanging there, okay? So that's kind of what I wanted to make this video because I figured someone out there is probably in the same spot I was, and I wished I'd have known this back when I started, obviously, because it would have made sure that I'd made you know less mistakes. I wouldn't have you know, done as far in the adventure map. Um, I would have saved more elementium, wouldn't have crafted so much with it, and I could have gone and started ranking up monsters a long time ago and been in a better spot now than I am. But like I said, that's only like. Doing videos for you guys, believe it or not, helps me a lot as a YouTuber because I learn things that I need to be doing better because <laughs> I have to. You know, I've got to learn them, then I can tell you guys about them. And, I, and when I'm telling you guys about them, you know, it really helps me formulate my plan for what I got to do. So there it is, guys. Not a super duper detailed guide, not like crazy in depth, but it should really help you out if you're in the same place I am and you're really struggling in PvP. That's going to be my game plan. I should be able to rank up to 110s, 115s, and I'll have a much better shot in PvP now. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, don't forget to leave those in the down there, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, please make sure you smash that thumbs up button and show your support, and I will see you guys next time.